Are you ready to snap a K? This video is part of a series for the Happy Halloween quilt by Amy Bradley Designs. Snaplique is an automated method to take a paper quilt pattern, scan it into the scan and cut, and convert it into a machine embroidery design. You can even use the scan and cut to cut out all your pieces. You'll be able to create blocks like this for your quilt with an embroidery machine and no longer have to go around each individual piece with a domestic sewing machine. This method is a lot of fun and it's a real time saver and I hope you join me. Let's get to it. Today I'm doing Mrs. Monster and the placement sheet is on page 45 and 46 and I held them up to light and taped them together and this is going to be scanned in and saved as a JPEG. I have the brother scanning map. I'm just going to pop it in here. And load the mat. On the screen you have menu choices of pattern or scan and pattern are patterns that were in the machine when you bought it. And I want to scan and to get the JPEG that I can use in Embrilliance as a background image I have to scan to USB. I already have a USB over here in the side of the machine so I'm just going to scan to USB until it start. Okay, it said it's saved to the USB media. I'm going to tell it OK. And we're back to the scan menu. And I'm just going to remove the design sheets and take the pattern piece that's on page 23 and slide it into the scanning mat. And then I want to scan to cut data and I'm going to tell it start. It scanned just fine and we have some menu choices here. We have outside only, which means it'll only capture the outsides of the lines on the image. We have inside outside, which you would use if you had holes like in letters an O or, or the inside of a B or something like that. And then we have regions. So there's nothing on the inside. It just has uh, numbers for placement. So I'm just going to choose outside only. And it's just wanting me to make sure is that exactly what I want to capture. I'm going to tell it OK. I can save it to the machine, to the cloud, or a USB. I'm going to save this one to the cloud, and it's going to save in Brother Canvas. I'm going to tell it OK, and I'm all finished with the scan and cut for right now. So I'll eject the mat and tell it OK. You can go to home. Is it OK to delete all patterns? I'm going to tell it OK because we already saved them in the cloud. I'm here at canvasworkspace.brother.com. I ran into a bit of a snag. Let me show you. This is my original scan. Let me go into edit. And I had my scan and cut set to scan for black and white and not color because these are black and white pictures. And it created a double line on the hair, the face, and the collar. And I'll go up and you can see it has broken graphics and I wasn't able to fix that. I also tried tracing them and when I tried to trace them that also was a problem. Here's a tracing right here. Let me bring this one in. You can see I've got the same problem. Let me grab this and I have the same it's the strangest thing. I had no idea how or why on those three pieces that happened even with the tracing. I traced it with a pencil and I traced it with a Crayola marker onto printer paper and it just did not work. I am going to get rid of all of this. I changed the scan and cut to color and it worked. It found just the colored pieces. I, I don't know why that worked, but it did. I'm very happy not to have any double lines on this. All right, back to the matter at hand here. I'm going to grab 
the pieces I want to keep and pull them off the mat. And then the pieces that I don't want, I'm going to highlight the entire mat and hit delete with my keyboard. And then bring these back in. That was the strangest thing because I was like, why did that happen? <laughs> All right, these need to be mirrored because I'm going to cut pretty side up with the fabric. If you're going to cut pretty side down, let's say you have a very, very sticky mat. You want to cut pretty side down. You can leave them like this, but I'm going to right click and group so that they are one object and go up to edit and flip horizontally. And now I want to right click and ungroup because you cannot ungroup them down at the scan and cut machine. I want to move these according to the fabric it's going to be cut on. Just move these around. I don't know if I've got enough room to cut everything on a 12 inch mat or not. We shall see. We might. I need to have enough margin around the outside of the block in order to be able to cut. I don't think we will. I'm going to change this to a 24 inch mat. I'm going to go up to project 12 by 24. I like about an inch all the way around each piece so that I have plenty of fabric to stick to the mat while the blade is dragging around on it. This looks good. I'm going to retitle it Mrs. Monster. I'm going to go to the project tab and inbox with an arrow and a plus sign to save as a new project. While I'm here, I've got my little notepad with the number of the fabric according to the fabric key from Two Chicks Quilting and what it is. I need to make sure that the eyes and the stripe are right next to each other because they're going to share a piece of fabric and then I want to group these so that when I move one, they both move. And the bolts and the nose are also the same fabric. Group those. While I'm here, I'm just going to click on each one and I'm going to make note of the size and I'm going to add about an inch or so to the size. This one right here would be, the hair will be I'll say five and a half, 5.5 by, we'll say seven and a quarter. I'm going to continue to do that for all the rest of these pieces. So now I'm ready to download these again. I'm going to save it one more time. I'm going to click on the project tab and just do an overwrite so it knows those things that I've changed and I'm going to download it. Click this big download button over here on the left and I'm going to download to PC and that's the file I'll use to create the embroidery design and scan and cut transfer so I can cut out my pieces. All right, it says it's ready. I'm all finished with Canvas. To change your scan to a color scan, you'll just hit the scan button and scan to cut data and It'll tell you right here, recognition mode, and it's set to color. If you're on black and white, you can touch the wrench and just switch over to color and tell it okay. I'm using my 24 inch mat and I have all the fabric laid out for the Mrs. Monster. Now this is the standard tack mat and it's not very sticky at all. I have used Zig glue on it to re-stick it and it's Z-I-G glue. I usually have it here, but I don't, it's in other videos. On the white, I made some hash marks with the black Crayola marker around the edges so I can make sure to stay within the margins on that. And I'm going to just press, um, I just need to scan the mat. So I want to retrieve data from the cloud. You can get it from the machine, the cloud, a USB, or your computer. I'm going to get it from the cloud. I need to rotate the hair and I've got a black bar down here so it is um, it needs to be told that I have a 24 inch mat. So I'm going to touch the wrench 
and I'm going to go to cut area and I'm going to choose 12 by 24 and tell it OK and OK. And I'm going to scan the mat right now. Press the scan button and hit start. Okay, the hair fabric in the kit is directional, so I'm going to tap it and go to edit and object edit, and I want to rotate. We have resize, don't do that, um, multiples and rotate. And I want to rotate 90. Okay, bring that down. That's good. This is the collar. I'm going to move it down here. The eyelids go here. The nose goes up here with the bolts. I guess I didn't group these this time. I'm going to go down and I'm going to grab that hair and make sure it's within the little black dot margins I have. And then the face, I want to rotate that 90 as well. And I need to bring the eyes in to the hair. There they are right there. And drag them down and they'll jump a little bit. And I'm going to rotate these 90 so everything fits. Rotate that. There we go. Well, hopefully everything fits. Okay, that all looks real good. I'm going to tell it okay. And I want to get in and make sure that the eyes are not overlapping on the hair. So I'm going to hit the magnifier and use my page here to go down. Make sure everything is as it needs to be. Yeah, that looks real good. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to tell it okay. And okay. And okay. Please select and cut. Start. Less than two minutes to cut all of these. Awesome. Tell it OK. And eject. Perfect. OK. Awesome. I'm going to digitize Mrs. Monster and the first thing I want to do is make sure I'm in Stitch Artist and I have all these little drawing icons and whatnot. I'm going to bring in the background image and there she is and click open. I can see it here. If you cannot see the picture and you can see it over here in the objects panel, click on the little button with the tree and the sun that is show and hide. She doesn't look like she's straight. Got a little crookedness. And now I need to bring in the vector graphic. There it is. Open. First thing I want to do is to, I want to resize the JPEG image to, I'll choose the face. Just kind of put this right here and then drag it larger and get it. Oh, that's pretty close. It looks like it could be a little bit bigger. I'm measuring up here at the top of the head. It's a little too big. Just a little bit. The dots at the top of the head and the face. That looks good. So that I don't accidentally change it again, I'm going to click on it and click the lock. And that way I know that it is going to 
always stay this size. I won't be able to resize it accidentally. And I'm going to rearrange these pieces now to be in the stitch order they need to be for being stitched out. The left bolt is first. Right click and move first. And then the right bolt is after that, so you grab it on the picture and hover it up over the one you want it to be after. The face is next, and then the hair, and then the stripe. They're in the right stitch order. I want to save this. I'm going to come up to File, Save Working File, and I'm going to call it Mrs. Monster Draft. I don't use a period in the naming convention because after Mrs. because that is, it gets read different by the computer in the file name. I'm gonna tell it save. Just don't use any punctuation beyond a dash if you can avoid it. And I'm going to move all these pieces now to where they need to go. I'm gonna do some fine tuning now and I'm going to hide the background image. I want to make sure, oh, I got pretty good on that there. I'm gonna scroll in with the mouse and hold down the space bar. My cursor turns into a little hand and I wanna make sure that the stripe is not over the edge of the hair. And if I have to rotate it a little bit, I can. To do this, I'm going to make sure the hair first is sitting exactly where I want it on the head. And this looks good right here. Once that's done, then I can move the stripe where it needs to go right there. That looks real good. And I'm going to move the eyelids just a little bit. I'm going to control S again to save this. That saves the working file. And now I need to make sure there's no broken graphics in here. So I'm going to click on design. And if you have Stitch Artist 3, you can go create, outline, and reconstruct outline. And if you see any movement at all, then graphics were repaired. Just a little bit. It did look like some movement on the face. So you may not, if you only have Stitch Artist 2, you might want to take the face and make it its own embroidery design and then merge it into the design with everything else. I'm going to apply applique stitches to it now. With everything selected, I'm going to click the applique button. There we go. And now over here in the properties box, I'm going to come to the applique tab. I'm going to change my E stitch to a blanket stitch. I want the stitch length to be 2.0 and the stitch width to be 3. Okay, that looks good. And on the smaller pieces, the eyelids, I want this stitch width to be 2.5. And same with the little bolts. And since these are so small, I'm going to change these to the 2.5 as well. And that just looks a little bit better. I can see right here already how these are kind of crossing over. I can see a few stitches hanging out the bottom right there. If I zoom in, you can see there are stitches hanging out. I'm going to highlight the hair and the stripe. And I want to move these down just a little bit so that I don't have any stitches from the blanket stitch on the face that would hang out underneath. That's going to prevent the hidden stitches from being removed if they're hanging out. To see how this might look, I'm going to jump out of Stitch Artist and give it a the scissor right here, remove hidden stitches. That looks really good. All of the these are gone. The ones on the top of the eyes are gone, the bottom of the neck, and both of these behind the bolts. So that looks great. I love that. It looks really good. Now I'm going to go back into Stitch Artist. I want to create, design, begin new design. And let me bring the background image back in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. 
and I want to draw the little lash laugh lines she has next to her eyes. Use the draw tool, hold down the shift key. I'm going to click here, here, and here, and hit enter. And I'm going to do this again here, here, here. Click enter. All right. And these are both lines. I want them to be run stitches, so I'm going to select both of them. And the run stitch tool is right up here underneath the Stitch Artist button. And I'm going to come over here to the Properties box, and I want it to be a double run with a 2.0 millimeter stitch length. Now I want to do the same thing for the mouth. I'm going to create design, begin new design. Probably if you don't make it a different thread color, the, your sewing machine, your embroidery machine will go ahead and blend everything in together, which is fine. That's not a big deal. It's all the same thread color. And the last bit is going to be the eyeballs. Create design, begin new design. I want the circle tool. Hold down the shift key, make a little pupil, make it a little bit smaller. I want that to be a run. I'm going to click the run button right here underneath. I'm sorry, I want that to be a fill. I click the fill button underneath the run. My apologies. Okay. And then I'm going to highlight it again and right click copy, right click and paste. It pasted right on top of itself and I'm going to put it right there. That looks good. Now I'm going to fine tune these lines. I'm going to hide the background image and I want to make sure that the little V here is touching. That looks good. This one looks pretty good and I want to make sure the smile isn't all jagged. So I can move this just a tiny bit and make sure that the smile lines are touching each other. It looks like they are. This looks great. I think she's done. I'm going to jump out of Stitch Artist. I'm going to Control S to save again. Still saving the, the working file and make sure everything, I'm going to center her in the hoop. That looks good. And I need to turn it into an embroidery design now. I'm going to come up to File, Save As, Stitch and Working, and go up one level to Mrs. Monster. And instead of Draft, it's going to be Final. And save it as a PES design. Now I'm going to open a new tab and bring that in. Oh, she looks great. I love it. I'm going to bring in the, oh, before I bring in the background quilting, I want the placement lines for the bolts to stitch one right after the other. I'm going to move them up so it's going to go placement, placement, or I'm sorry, final stitch, final stitch, and then we have the placement for the head, final. Very good. This looks great. Everything else is fine. I'm going to bring in the background quilting and the basting box. And I want to make sure that that stitch is first. Right click and move first. All done. This is ready to go over to the Luminaire. I'm going to Utility, Wi-Fi to Brother Baby Lock, Mrs. Monster Final, and tell it OK. File sent to machine. Great. She's ready to stitch.
I think she's amazing. I love it. We'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something.